What is up, everybody? Sorry for the delay. Uh, every day is a learning issue. Every day is something new. But every day that we do do this, we learn a little something. And today we're dealing with the sound issue. And we're trying to get things together. We have two amazing guests that I'm very excited to have. Not only are they amazing guests, amazing artists, uh, both legends. They're also very good friends. And I'm happy to have them on. So another day of quarantine. Another day of weirdness, another day of adapting and figuring things out. But what do we do? We get through it. We just keep pushing on and trying to figure out this odd new life that life has dealt us. And we're hanging out and chilling out. And I look forward every day at 6 o'clock to come here and see you good people and try to put something interesting on so you can help deal with this craziness. I hope I'm helping. Uh, I appreciate everybody liking and sharing and uh, it's subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to my uh, YouTube page, go to grillosattheshock.com and you can subscribe through there. Get on my YouTube. I need YouTube. YouTube is very important. So uh, get it out there. See what you can do. Uh, went down to work today. <clears throat> very cautious. I did something that has never happened before and probably may never happen again. I was uh, on my motorcycle and I was on Houston Street and I made it up 6th Avenue all the way to 51st Street with not hitting one red light, all green lights, all the way, straight shot from house in the 51st. Believe it or not, that actually happened today. That's how dead the city is, uh, how people are really staying home and uh, listening to what they're supposed to be doing. And uh, hopefully that's that. But um, without further ado, we're running a little late, so I'm going to skip all the bullshit. I have two iconic rock and roll artists waiting in the back to come on. One of them is Ruby Mazur. He did, the, everybody knows Ruby's artwork. You, uh, whether you know who Ruby is or not, you will now. Ruby's artwork is uh, he, the mouth and tongue logo from Rolling Stone. Noah, do you have one of those pictures like hanging around? Everybody knows the mouth and tongue logo from the Rolling Stones. Ruby is the artist behind that. And I also have a very good friend of mine, Mr. John Holstrom. He is Punk Magazine. That was his magazine. Anybody knows in the 70s and 80s during the New York City punk, uh, when the punk uh, fucking shit started up, and John was right there at CBGB's drawing and putting out a magazine. Two iconic rock and roll artists are right here, right now, Ruby Mazur and John Holstrom. Hey, Steve. Tell so, from here. Okay, can you hear John? Noah, can you hear John? Because uh, I just want to make sure. Well, John, is this was the issue that we were having. Yes, you could hear him. Okay, the issue was that John's phone is not allowing him to use the the speaker. So now he is on my phone, and you can see his face on uh, on screen. So we're, we're we're improvising. There's Ruby. There's John. Do you know you guys don't know each other, huh? No, we've never met. Haven't met yet. Yeah, but you but I see you both familiar with each other's artwork. Oh yeah. Uh, do you remember Punk oh, Magazine? And yeah, you both have great beards. Yeah, I'm getting there. Look, I got a little patch right here. It's coming in. Now, me and Ruby go back. Me and Ruby go back. Uh, club Expo days where we would come and he'd hang out at the nightclub. And then we'd go party at after hours at his studio. Which was so much uh, fun. I, I miss yeah. you so much, Ruby. I miss you too, Steve. We had some fun times. We had some crazy times. I loved that. I couldn't wait to go back to your studio. That's when, the, that's when all the real shit happened. <laughs> Well, you came up to my loft in Chelsea, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was some fun times. And uh, John Holstrom, I know through our good friend, mutual friend Chris Munger from My World, and John uh, was a good friend, and he uh, he actually I, I have the cartoon all ready to go. John John's artwork is famous, New York famous, like it's crazy. And John used to have a comic strip in Punk Magazine called In the Dumps, where it was. Cats and dogs and bands playing it like a rock and roll thing. And uh, I auditioned for the part of Muggs, the, the head dog, and I actually got it. And you didn't give it to me either. You were great, man. You were born to play a dog. Yeah. You were kind of concerned to bring me in. And I, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't really look at the script. I, I wanted to go off the cuff, and I did. And... Uh, so uh, real quick, Noah, why don't you play? Uh, the, it's only three minutes long, but this was the, the 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 sizzle reel, if you might call it, for in the dumps. I play Mugs, the main dog. Uh, Noah, play. Go ahead. Ah, oh, 
isn't that cute? Mug likes you. Whoa, dog, take it easy. Mug, stop that, bad dog. Excuse me, I'll be right back. What? <laughs> hey, stop that. Whoa. Mug, let the... Out you go, Mug. And no dinner until you come back and behave. Well, I thought they'd never kick me out of here. Now it's time to rock and roll. You want to roll me a place to home in the dumps. Where we can run away and people got no say in the dumps. No, we can pound the drums of the box and fall on the guitars. We're here with a wagon our tails in the dumps. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get it on, Max. I gotta get home early. Get a load of this. <laughs> we got a bunch of tail waggers here. That's right, we're pets. <laughs> What's it to you, Hairbo? Hey, you're messing with some wild cats. <laughs> you stupid idiots. <laughs> Our people work for us. We got them potter trained. My people pick my poop up right after I dump it. And they're so proud of it, they even put it in a little plastic bag. <laughs> you people pleasers can go eat a dog biscuit. Hey, cat, eat this. <laughs> Time to go, cats. No messing with the headliners. Call me. You can bring it, you can mow it, you can eat it, you can ball it, you can feed it, you can tease it, you can squeeze it, you can hit it, you can win it, you can find it, you can find it, you can pitch it to the pitches. No, it's Them damn dogs are despicable. There you are, Mug. Good boy. You got home just in time for dinner. So there you have it. In the dumps. Did we lose John there? I guess we lost John. I'm still here. I know, but either you're not on camera. There you go. You're back. So uh, that that that's how I pretty much got to know John a little bit, Ruby. And uh, so it, it, it's uh, nice. Yeah. Now, now tell everybody. Uh, so how did you get? How did you get your start? What was your big break, Ruby? Me? Yeah. What was your big break? Um, I was working. Uh, I got out of college. <clears throat> and I became the assistant art director of Go Magazine. And back then they had uh, Circus Magazine, Rolling Stone, Changes, and Go Magazine. And I was working there doing paste up and mechanicals. And two weeks into the job, the art director got pneumonia. So he was had to stay home. And the publisher asked me if I would stand in and be the art director. And I said, sure. Well, within that two weeks, I changed the whole format of the magazine, very avant-garde. And the publisher loved it, made me the art director after two weeks. And uh, I was there about six months. And a friend of mine had come up to the office and told me, hey, Paramount Records is opening up in the Gulf and Western building. They're looking for an art director. Why don't you try? I had only done one album cover, <clears throat> which was Billy Joel with the Hassles, because my brother and I were managing him at that time. So I went up, <clears throat> excuse me, went up to Paramount. No portfolio, nothing, just me and my mouth. Had went into Bill Gallagher, the president's office, and he said, what are your credentials? I didn't have any credentials. So I said, well, I'm young, I'm creative, 
I know you're looking at Bob Cato, who was a big art director at CBS at the time. And he said, and I'm sure you're talking to Bob and he's probably wanting $100,000. This was back in 1969. He said, well, what are you bringing to the table? I said, I'm going to give you album covers because back then it was just the recording artist, the photo, and a big block letters, his name. I said, I'm going to give you album covers that kids are going to look at in the record stores when they're flipping through the bins. And even if they don't know the artist, the artwork is going to be so cool, they're going to pick it up. Point of purchase sales. Well, that, that's how I and got into KISS, you know? KISS, well, like, I didn't know they were a band. I just really liked the artwork or the whole idea of it, you know? That was it back then. I mean, kids would go into the record stores, flip through the bins, and if they saw something really cool, they would pick it up and, like, read the liner notes. He said, so what are you asking for? I was a kid. I said, well, give me $50,000, three assistants, and a full expense account, and we'll do all the artwork in-house. And he said, can you come in Monday at 9? There you go. I said, yeah. And uh, that first year I was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Album Cover. Which album Which album was that? Start... I'm sorry? Which album was that? The uh, Crowfoot album, a Canadian rock group. They never went anywhere, but it was an awesome album cover. So all these groups started calling me to freelance their covers after I was nominated. So I started making more money freelancing covers than working at Paramount. So I did Billy Joel's first single album on Paramount. And uh, after that, I left and opened up my own studio on 18th Street and 6th Avenue. Big loft and uh, hired 10 assistants. We started doing about 15 album covers a week. Wow. And back then I was getting like 5,000 a cover. So I was rocking and rolling. How then did you I come? I up a West Coast office and we doubled it. And then Mick had called me to go into the recording studio and come up with the famous mouth and tongue. That's probably, and John, I think you can attest to this, the, the most recognizable symbol in all of rock and roll. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. You know, and I'd like, uh, yeah, there you go. That's Ruby right there. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a quick story. Did you know Peter Beard? I didn't know him, but I know everybody that I know knows him. And I, you know, I'm sure along the ways I, we must have hung out at some point, but I know he recently passed away, and I'm sorry okay. for your loss. Yeah, Peter was a dear friend. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, I was having a birthday party up at my law. Oh. oh, we lost Ruby for a second, guys. Just hold on. Um, he'll come back. So, Johnny, what are you, how are you dealing Hello. with all this? Oh, is he back? I'm here. Okay. As soon as you get the picture back up. How are you holding up, John? Oh, I'm doing fine. Uh, I don't go. I, I stopped going out a lot a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're a homebody anyway, right? Huh? You're a homebody anyway. Yeah, I work from home. I mean, if you're a cartoonist or an artist, uh, not much difference in your lifestyle. Yeah. So uh, I, I was going to tell the story to Ruby. Well, you know, you, you, you sign your book for me, and I, I, I always love the thing. Two Grillo, your bark is worse than your bite. And uh, that's, I love that. But um, the, the day you gave me that was that infamous uh, day at, at Destination Bar where um, I was uh, I was attacked behind the bar by that uh, drunk. So the coolest thing was you, you clocked him with a vodka bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and you, made, you made sure to get him from the well. <laughs> and with the expensive bottle of vodka. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm telling a story. Like the first night I uh, I hung out with John, really, um, I was bartending and we premiered the the cartoon at the bar, and everybody had left, and I had a bunch of people coming over uh, like a little later, and it was just 
my ex-wife, John, and our friend Chris at the end of the bar. And this guy comes in and he's a, he's a normal, every, you know, no, normal drunk that comes in all the time, an Irish guy. And he, I, I know what he gets. He gets a Budweiser. I crack a Bud. I put it down. And he pushes a bunch of singles at me at the bar. So the Bud was five. There were seven singles. So I put five in the register and two in my tip cup. And he goes, where's my fucking two dollars, you cunt? And I was like, what? He goes, where's my fucking two dollars? You took my fucking money. I went, you know what, Jerry? Here's your fucking money. I don't care. He goes, oh, you're a fucking filthy cunt. Everybody says it. Oh, they all talk about you. You're a fucking dirty fucking cunt. I said, you know what? I snatched the beer and I pushed the fucking five dollars. I said, get the fuck out of my bar. He goes, oh, give me back that beer, you fucking cunt. I went, get out. And he like stood up and pushed the chair back. And I went, don't do it, dude. Just don't. And I was hoping that John or Chris saw this. And then they kind of went to the end of the bar. So he gets to, he gets to the end of the bar. It was a long bar. And he's standing there and goes, oh, you're going to get it now. And I grabbed a bottle of vodka and I said, don't do it. And he charged me. He threw a punch and I lit him up with the bottle of vodka. It broke everywhere. A giant flap of skin comes hanging off his head. Blood everywhere. So I grabbed the bar rag and I drag him out and I throw him on the floor. Now, at this point, John, you had no idea what the hell happened until I hit him with the bottle. Right? Oh, I was I was watching the Knicks game. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you hit somebody in the head with a bottle. Yeah. And, uh, and John's not John's the, the, the kindest, nicest, nonviolent person in the world, right? So now he was so coked up, it took three of us to try to subdue him. Yeah. Like it, Twenty I, minutes. Twenty minutes for the cop to get there. I throw him on the floor. I take the flap of skin and I hold it. That now I'm covered in blood. Now he's trying to punch me. You got my friend Chris and John and my ex-wife kicking him. <laughs> while he's on the floor and he punches me in the head and I fucking took my thumb and I put it in the cut and I went Rah! and he goes oh I was like stop fucking trying to hit me I'm trying to help you and it was just a so it was the first night I actually hung out with John Holstrom <laughs> nice. so uh, that was uh yeah and then uh, 20 minutes for the cops to get there and they, they were around the corner good old days yeah so but um that that, that was a uh, that was my interesting night at the bar but um, and then the next day, his wife called up the bar and was like, "So uh, one of your bartenders hit my head, my husband in the head with a bottle." And then my my boss stuck up for me. He goes, "No, your husband attacked the bartender, and he defended himself with a bottle." He goes, "Oh, is that the way?" He went? You heard him screaming, "No!" She goes, "Oh, you lying cunt! Forget about it!" And then she hung up the phone. <laughs> he told her another story, <laughs> so she didn't believe him. So, um, so I, Ruby, I got to tell you, uh, I'm in love with that, uh, the uh, Willy Wonka painting that you did. I'm a huge fan yeah. of Willy Wonka. That one is just so amazing. Did you get? Did you know Gene Wilder at all? Did you? Did, did what was your inspiration I, I for did, that? Actually, I was uh, when I went to Paramount as art director. I had a call from the president, and he uh, of Paramount, not the president, and he said we just took on a new movie. I want you to go down to the screening room because you're going to do the artwork. I said, okay, cool. I was all excited. So I go into this very posh little screening room and uh, I sit down and I'm watching the credits come up and the movie starts. And some guy sits down, like not next there it to is. me, but a seat over. And nice. I'm smelling this fantastic popcorn. And I'm watching the movie, and this guy is munching away on the popcorn. And I look over at him, and I went, that's you. And he went, and that's you. And it was <laughs> Gene Wilder, and we became very good friends. And when he passed away, I did this tribute to him with my Wonka painting. I love Candy That's man. such an amazing painting, man. That is so cool. Thank you. Yeah. I'm working on a new one right now, a triptych. Uh, what's, with, what's what? I'm three sorry. Separate canvases that, three separate canvases that make up one painting. Wow. That Candyman painting is such a huge seller. I, I mean, of Gicle Prince. Yeah. It's like, I can't even keep up. Yeah. No doubt. But I want to just tell you about Peter Beard. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Friend. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I was having a birthday party up in my loft and Peter walks in with this huge brown wrapped board 
And he goes, I got you a birthday present. I said, Peter, you don't have to give me a birthday present. He goes, no, this is a special birthday present. I said, okay. Well, Peter was on an assignment deep, deep, deep in the bush in Africa. I mean, where no man has ever gone. And he came across the Watusi tribe doing a ritual dance around the fire with animal blood all over them. And the chief was wearing my mountain tongue t-shirt and he photographed it. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> That's one of my prized possessions. I, you know, I walk around New York and every time I see something, I always take a picture and send it to you. And the funny thing is, Somebody, I know you somebody, I, I remember that the guy on the, with the neck tattoo, he had the mouth and tongue logo, yes. and he didn't know what it was from. Like, I said, Well, that's right. He goes, Is that the Rolling Stones? Oh, I didn't know that. Like, he had it tattooed yeah. on his neck, and he didn't know it was a Rolling Stone. I, I, like, I'm gonna tell you a funny one. Every Friday, I go to the gallery here on Maui, and one Friday night, this 85 year old woman comes running up to me. She goes, oh my God, Ruby Tuesday, I can't believe I'm meeting you, oh my God. And I'm saying, calm down, lady, calm down. And over the years, you know, I've been at clubs and I'm drawing, tat, you know, the mouth and tongue on chick's tits and their arms or whatever. I witnessed it myself. You were a, you're a smooth operator, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so she's all excited and she goes, I have a tattoo of your mouth and tongue. Would you sign it for me? And I went, sure. And I'm expecting her to roll up a sleeve or something. She drops. And now the gallery is crowded. I mean, packed with people. She drops her drawers, bends over the desk. And this lily white, 85-year-old wrinkly ass is staring me in the face. Oh, and I look at her husband. I said, "Really?" He says, "Go for it." Oh yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. signing my. I tap like out. This. I tap out. <laughs> I signed it. She came back the next day to show me she had it tattooed. Crazy yeah, that's crazy people out there. Now, uh, John, John, you live down um, in the East Village and uh, down by my territory. Have you noticed the amount of? Like crazy people that are roaming the streets down there. Like I think, like there's people off their meds. There's people released from the hospital. There's criminals out there. It's like, it's really dangerous to go out like at night because these people. There's no place to live. They're living on the subways. So yeah, you, 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 what you, are they see... doing with the homeless? Nothing. Yes. Yeah. No. Did, did you hear about the nurse who got attacked near Bellevue? No. This woman just got over the coronavirus and went back to work took the subway, walked to Bellevue, and got attacked by a, a gang of uh, teenage thugs. Yeah. Um, it's it's not a good situation here. And I think it's a, a shocking, horrendous thing that de Blasio is not doing something to get the homeless off the streets. You think about all the empty hotels we have. I mean, someone Put couldn't just set up a program place. because he's yeah. people <laughs> off the streets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. By the way, um, you know, I, I did a design for the Rolling Stones that used the uh, lips and tongue image. Yeah. It was in Japan. And I, I put nice. the uh, lips and tongue on a kind of a, a skeleton uh, wrapper. You can see it on my website, uh, johnholmstrom.com. I just put up a bunch I of uh, go check it out. images of stuff I did in Japan. Cool. So I, I hope Ruby likes that. Thanks. I'm going to try to find something fun here. I love looking. This is like such a great book. So, like, yeah, yeah, John, you were there in the beginning when, uh, like, punk first started. Like, that must have been so cool. Like, Iggy Pop, Blondie, uh, all, all those fucking, the Ramones. You did all those cool artwork for them. How friendly were you with them? Oh, I was great friends with uh, Ramones and Blondie. Uh, and I knew Chris and Tina from Talking Heads well. Um, but everybody just hung out at CBGB's. You could get to know almost anybody. Ruby, here's John's thing. My my, my, my producer, Noah, is on point. Yeah, Ruby, there's a, what John did. 
Oh, I love it. <laughs> nice, John. My boy Noah's on point. Actually, I just became, yeah, Mark Ramones just became my new best friend. Did you get that, John? Yeah. Okay. So, no, he said uh, he's, he's really good friends with Marky Ramon right now. Oh, good. We Tell did a two-man show. Yeah, I will. We just did a two-man show together here in Maui. He does these paintings on his drum heads, which is pretty cool. Is he out there now? He's living out there? No, he's in Brooklyn. Okay. But he, came, he was on vacation. And he wanted to have a show, and we gave him a show at the gallery. That's so we cool. I, I, I met him once. He's definitely Marky Ramon. <laughs> oh, he's such a cool guy. Yeah. He's really a good guy. Yeah. But, so uh, I'll tell you my Blondie story real quick. Now, I, you know, Blondie just, to me, was like, the, the, and like, so I'm like four or five years old, and there's Blondie on TV with her cherry red lipstick and her shirt hanging off the side of her shoulder, and she's got no bra on, and she's doing that little pouty thing. She was and hot. At, at that moment, at that moment when I was that young, I knew I was not gay. Like, I knew all of a sudden- We all did. Something, but I was like that young, and then downstairs suddenly became aware. Of Boy, how much, yeah, right. and it was like I put a pillow over my lap. I was like at my grandparents' house or something. So, but at that moment, I knew I wasn't gay. So I was at um one of uh, what's his name, that really famous rock and roll gu uh, uh, guitar, no, uh, ph photographer. Oh, you know him, John. He always Bob, Bob, Bruin? Bob Gruen. Yeah, yeah. It was Bob Gruen's birthday party, and who's standing at the bar is Blondie. So I go over to her, and I've, I, you know, I just I could not stop myself. So I go, hi. Um, she goes, hi. I go, D can I tell you something weird? And she looks at me and she goes, oh, great, what? <laughs> and I go, when I was very, and I was polite about it. I go, when I was very young and you were very young, I saw you on TV with your cherry red lipstick and your shirt hanging off the shoulder, doing your little pouty face thing. And I said, at that moment, I knew I was not gay, that I loved women. And she put her head down for a second. She goes, I said, so you're the reason I'm not gay. She goes, you're the reason I'm not gay. Huh, I like that. I'm going to put it in a song. I went, really? Can I buy you a drink? She goes, no. I went, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, Debbie had that effect on many men. Yeah. No, I knew that. Like, that was the Did first. Did put it in a song? No, I don't know. She, I, 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 you got to check and see if she's <laughs> recording anything right now. If it is, that's because yeah. of me. And you know what? If I saw her okay. again, I, I bet she'd, I, she, she will remember that story. Do you want so, to hear a story about me giving David Bowie a line for his song? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. I was down at the Electric Lady recording studio, and I was hanging out with David in the studio, and he was such a great guy, really nice guy. And we were there until about 2 in the morning, and he goes, Ruby, you up for partying? Duh. Yeah. <laughs> what have we been doing all night? Yeah, yeah. He says, all right, well, come back. I, I don't remember if it was the Sherry Netherland or the Pierre, one of those Central Park West hotels. And we go up to the 32nd floor. He had the entire floor, 32nd floor. So we go to his main suite, and he sends his two big bodyguards out to the elevators and he says okay let's go back in i said what are they doing he said well the only people allowed up on the floor are great looking women and our drug dealers and i said sounds good to me we go back in and the parade starts and chicks are coming in left and right and drug dealers are coming in left and right, pounds and pounds. And we're shoveling it up and going into our private rooms. Day two, day three. Oh, my and God. Like, Dave, Dave, this is like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And he went, I fucking love that. Oh shit! I'm putting that in the song. Wow! Holy crap! We went that's so cool. Four days. Oh my Dave. god! <laughs> oh. 
I can't even think about that doing that anymore. You know, I oh like I, I want to be on the couch by if 11 o'clock. If I ever o'clock. looked at it, I would have a heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I just remember going out to the club and just like I would like I would leave at nine o'clock in the morning and make sure that I I would bring my sunglasses because I knew oh. that I was going to be coming home and the Absolutely. sun was going to be up. <laughs> and everybody well, was always so jealous. Before. They were like, they were like, you got wow, you got sunglasses. Before, You're so lucky. <laughs> at four o'clock, we first. Hit the after hours clubs. Yeah, yeah, no, I just because that, that's well, as a bartender, you know, that, you, everybody works a nine to five job. They get off at five o'clock. You, you can go to the bar. You go to the bar, but as a, right. working in the nightclub industry, you get off at four o'clock in the morning, nothing's open except for after hours. Right. My right. favorite after hours, John, and I think you probably might have been there at some point, was on 13th, uh, 13th Street and Avenue A. It was called Brownies. And it was a, it was a blacked out building. And literally, you knocked on the door, and it was like, shh, shh. like they didn't know you, they didn't let you in, or you had to be recommended. You you had to you paid twenty five bucks for a really horribly cheap bag of cocaine, and uh, they sold four dollar beers, and they had cut straws at the bar in a little cup. And the owner Brownie was like a black cowboy, and he sat there on like a, a really high chair. He had the cowboy hat and the cowboy boots with the big belt buckle, and the rules were. Two rules: You couldn't curse, and you couldn't talk above a whisper. And if you, but you could do it. You, you could, could snort all the cocaine yeah, you, could, you wanted. Yeah, and pretty much it was. It was basically baby laxative, man. You were just in that bathroom like instantly. But um, but you could well, be white. As long as you paid the twenty. You remember my loft? Yeah. Right downstairs from my loft on the on street level was Rendezvous, the famous after hours club. Yeah. So I would go there and take my elevator up to my loft. That's yeah, I, I I would uh I used to um I used to run after hours. After a while I picked up on the business. So uh, the bars that I worked with, um I, I would have uh I, I the transvestites would come in and they would do all the drug selling and we we split the door and I got the a piece of the bar. But you know, because everybody yeah. went, you know, I knew a bunch of people in the business, so the owner was down with it and you know, so I did that at a couple of different places. I think we lost nice. John. But uh, that's all good. So, um, uh, dude, uh, what are you working on right now? You doing that that giant painting? I'm working on two massive paintings: the rock and roll, the rock and roll Last Supper. I saw and that. My newest one is the hip hop Last Supper. Oh, really? That's so cool. Do you know? Did you? I don't know if you saw uh, last Friday. I had MC Search from Third Base and DMC on my show. I know Search. You know Search, do you? Yeah, good people, man. Yeah. Search, uh, yeah. Search is my boy. Uh, he's a, he's a. I know Search from way back. Yeah. So Search, I had Search on. If you go to Grillo's, Grillo's AfterShock XL, uh, dot com, you can watch it or go to the YouTube because Search didn't know DMC was coming on, and I totally surprised him, and he bugged out. His reaction was great. He was like, "Oh." Actually, my, my nephew was one of the leads in Crazy Town. Remember this song, Butterfly? Uh, not on the top ago. of my head. He's a big rap hip-hop producer. He produced Search. That's how I first met him. Yeah, no, to... I'm a huge third bass fan, and his his his, uh, uh, his solo shit was just off the hook. I wish I could get more out of him. Hey, did you see this? Yeah. Uh, this great company made these for me. Hold on a sec. They made um, Aftershock XL face masks. I saw it. I love it. <laughs> that's uh, those are, who that's, did uh, your logo? Um, a very good friend of mine. Not, not, his name is Doc Ivan, and I always a big. I, I, Doc it's Ivan. Really he's good. he's. Uh, I'll tell him that. He'll, he would like. He's gonna love to hear that. He um. Really he, does, he, he does it in seconds. Like and I, like he's yeah. he's a big he's a big Howard Stern fan. So and he, like anytime I have anything I need, I go to Doc Ivan. He doesn't charge me, and he, he's like, it's done, Steve. So, Doc Ivan, nice. big, big shout out to Doc Ivan. And you, Doc Ivan, you're getting props from one of the biggest artists in rock and roll history in the world. I love it. Yeah, love it's cool. It. He did that. He banged that out in like 10 minutes. He's like, you need a logo? Here you go. Nice. So, I want to get, I want to get. Yeah, well, these guys today, Steve, they got computers. We didn't have, we didn't even know what a computer was back in the day. Yeah. We no, I know. actually draw the shit, but yeah. you got a great logo. Yeah, thanks, man. Really I want to. I want to get a T-shirt. Hopefully, when this all, I want to get some T-shirts. So John's back. 
So uh, maybe I'm not. I'm on the phone still. Hey, but, oh, you're on the phone still. Up. Yeah, no, uh, okay, yeah. you're still there. So uh, I wasn't sure. But, um, John, what are you working on these days? I'm working on, actually, uh, a couple drawings for our buddy uh, Rich Belfiore. Oh, I know, Rich. Uh, I'm drawing uh, CBGBs and the Fillmore East. Wow. That's cool, man. And what, yeah, what, what about in the dumps? What's going on? We have any, uh, when are we going to be on Comedy Central? <laughs> you know, I, I'm afraid we're past the day of cable TV animation. Yeah. Like, this whole thing going on here is going to shift the culture so much. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to some people about starting new projects, but I was supposed to do a European tour at the end of the year. Oh. I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we, we don't know when we're going to come back to normal. And living in New York, we're going to be the last place to open up. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Now, R Ruby, you're a big beach goer. I always see you at the beach. Now, you can't go to the beach, huh? Well, I, um, uh, two weeks ago, they said nobody could lay on the beach. You could walk. You could exercise, you could go in the ocean, but you can't sunbathe, which to me is ridiculous. It's stupid. There's 10 people on the beach. What, do you, how, what kind of harm are you going to do? But they stopped. So today, as of today, you're allowed to walk on the beach, exercise, and surf and go okay. in the ocean. Okay. So yeah, does it make sense? That's, that's, a, that's a perfect place for social distancing. You know, there's only 150,000 people total that live on Maui. They're not allowing any tourists into Hawaii. No flights are flying in. There's 10 people on a beach. Yeah. How are you going to hurt anybody? Well, you know, because you wonder why that there's also this. Uh, there, there's being smart. My, my thing that I preach is don't do anything it's unnecessary. Overkill. Don't think, don't, don't think, don't do anything like unnecessary to put yourself in unnecessarily put in harm's way. Like, you know, don't, don't go out if right. you don't have to go out. Like, like, you know, I have my, my motorcycle down here. I just used it for work. No joy riding. You know, it's not a time for joy riding because God forbid something no. happens. Um, I don't go out of third gear. I kind of keep it really on the DL. And so, uh, but you know, it just uh, don't do anything unnecessarily. That's going to put you in, in a way where you can get hurt. Because you're taking a doctor away, a bed away, a nurse away, an ambulance oh, away absolutely. from the people that really need it. So that, that's my advice to people out there. But I don't see what the harm is in laying on, on sand. So I uh, yeah. And but, my whole life has been isolated. I paint day and night. The only time I go out is to go to the supermarket to get food and an hour, hour and a half on the beach. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Wait, we, I, my laying out in the beach. Uh, we got to talk about your daughter. Yes. Yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you. She's uh, not many people can make it in this uh, industry. She's an actress, and uh, she's actually making well, it. She's been acting since she's eight years old. Yeah. I mean, she's done like forty major films. What's her name? What's her? What's her? What's her actor? What's her? What's, what's her stage name? There is none. Her real name is Monet Mazer. Man, Noah, look that up. M O N E T. Yeah, she's done over 40 major films, but this new TV series, All American, has exploded. Yeah, that's cool. Now, you don't even have to work anymore. You could have her take care of you. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, people ask me, why don't you retire? If I retired, what would I be doing? There she is. Wow, stunning. Thank you. So anybody knows that's that show? That's that, that that that's his. That's Ruby's daughter, Monet Mesa, aka Laura Baker. Okay, yeah. So, um, so she has, that, that's good for her. She's safe. She's she's safe and everything. She's good. Yeah, she's at home with her two boys, going a little stir crazy. They're on hi hiatus now, anyway. Everything but is. I don't know if they're going to be able to go back to work in July. I don't know. Well, we'll find out everything as it happens, you know. Yeah. So yep. what's the what's the, let me yep. ask you a question? What's the 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 most one of your paintings went for? How much they sell for? Yeah. Now, what was what was your what was the bit? What was the one that you got the most for? And what what painting was it? 
Actually, it was $50,000 of a model friend of mine. Um, and it was up in my loft in New York. And Prince Mohammed Al Sudiari of Saudi Arabia came up, loved the painting, paid me 50 grand in cash. Nice. That's so cash. cool. Do you still have the original artwork for the mouth and tongue logo? It burnt in my warehouse or with all my 3,000 oh, albums. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. That sucks. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, someone wanted to ask, are you in any relation to Debbie Mazer? No, she spells her name M A Z E R. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. I met her once. She was really she's nice. Uh, um, she's actually friends. You see all the rings that I got here? Like I got an Aftershock yeah. XL ring. With that, yeah. That right there. And these are all yeah. made by my buddy Alfie at Sterling Assault. And um, and she okay. she's good friends with Alfie's family. So when his dad passed away, I met her at the wake. And um, yeah, yeah, he's incredible. Look at this. Look at the details in some of this stuff. She's actually good friends with my daughter. Oh, oh yes. I, I always had a crush on her with that little lisp. Yeah. That? She's so New York. Yeah, she is. Her and her husband had like a, a show on the Travel Channel, I think, where they basically they, they, they did all stuff and they cooked in the kitchen and stuff. And it was like really cute. They look like they were, they were such a yeah. sweet couple, but... Um, yeah, no, she, she's one of my favorites, especially in Goodfellas. She was like, I fell in love with her there. Oh, she was great. She's a great actress. Yeah. You're not a, you just don't see her enough. That's the problem. But yeah, so is the entertainment she's business. very picky on what she takes. Yeah. So, but all right, gentlemen, I think it's time to wrap it up. It's almost 6.50. I go on the roof every night and do a live broadcast. You got, Ruby, you could watch I it on watch Facebook. I you every night. Yeah, cool. And uh, so uh, I go up at 7 o'clock. We do a little celebration for all the people out there putting their lives on the line so we can have our milk and bread and cookies and cupcakes and ice cream. So uh, I send <laughs> all my love, all my love and heart to all New Yorkers. That You know, that's my hometown. Yeah, I am your, your 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 cell phone, Ruby, so I can give you a shot and check in every once in a while. Please do. And yeah. When this, I was supposed to have a show in New York in June, but we'll see what happens. Happen, but I'll tip you off and let you know when I do. And well, definitely. Well, I'm definitely coming out to your house in Maui. Anytime. Cool. All right, Anytime. you got you, you, you have a Facebook thing, or do you want to? Do you have a Twitter handle or something you want to promote? Either you guys. Actually, my website, I will. Okay, go ahead. It's do it. RubyMazerGallery.com. Look, look at that. Noah's already all over it. Look at that. Love him. Noah, you're the man. <laughs> and Johnny Boy, what you got Keep something? Well, take oh, care. Just my website. I love, uh, you, John love you, buddy. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. JohnHolmstrom.com. I think uh, Noah's on Yeah, he's already on it. The kid's good. What can I tell you? So, but, um, and you guys can go to. Pay the big bucks, you get the best. There you go, man. So uh, and you guys can go to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to grillosaftershock.com, and you can subscribe from there. Uh, all the you know, and spread the word. Um, I, I'm starting all over again. I had like 4,500 people on Battle Chats, so I'm not with Battle Chats anymore. I'm on my own, so I'm starting from scratch. So anybody that you could like and share, and drive them over to my YouTube channel because that's where I'm going to make some money. Okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'm searching you. for it, but I can't find it. It's grillosaftershockxl.com. Okay, I'll, I'll find you. Yeah, okay, cool. Aloha, guys, thank you so Steve. much. Aloha. Nice to meet you, John. Good seeing you, man. All right, guys, thank you so much. All right, Thanks. I want to thank everybody else out there for tuning in. That was some interesting stories, two iconic legends, and rock and roll art history. So uh, learned a couple of wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, came from Ruby Mazer after four days of a coke fuel party with David Bowie. Uh, you got to love that. So I want to wish everybody a safe and happy day. And uh, you know what they say, be safe is the new goodbye. So be safe. Yep. Be safe. See you later.